Shante, would you like to maybe intro yourself? Give us an idea of, I suppose, who you are and why I'm talking to you. Sure thing, my dude. Uh, number one, thank you for having me on and being so accommodating the time difference. I think this is like one of the worst time differences between where you are and, and the West Coast of the, of the state. So thank you. I appreciate you. Uh, I am Shante Cofield. Uh, most people know me as the maestro now, which has been a, a moniker that uh, has really grown on me over the past however many years. I'm a physical therapist by trade, entrepreneur by choice, necessity perhaps. I uh, got my start very much in the movement space, stumbled across CrossFit, wanted to learn more about it, that moved me into the into the Instagram world. Uh, and from there, I was kind of like, hey, maybe I could make some videos as well. Like I wanted to, I honestly, David, I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to share some ideas. Uh, from that, I wound up getting a job with Rock Tape. I traveled with them, taught for them internationally for a few years during the, I, what I consider to be the golden years of Rock Tape. Uh, I built my brand, the Movement Maestro, concurrently and you know i strategically chose the name movement the, you know, the word movement uh empowers part of the name because it would allow me the, the flexibility to grow uh, but the beginning of my journey was all about movement and the physical therapy space and largely educating other providers on my beliefs around movement and now i have moved into the online business space uh, i was kind of doing that behind the scenes for quite a few years, I was doing the virtual thing as well. And then COVID hit and everyone, you know, I don't want to say everyone, but many people were like, Hey, I believe, can you help me? And uh, I was able to, to fully pivot, double down on that. And now I do online business coaching for other movement professionals. It's very broad, but other movement professionals who are looking to use Instagram, namely to establish their brand, attract their people and, and support their online business. And, and the bigger thing is to build their best life. So I live in SoCal, I drive a Jeep, I have a cat and my life is, is very, very good. Sweet. <laughs> The, uh, are you going to keep the, will you ever drop the movement maestro? You know, I paid so much for the trademark, David. So I don't mm. think I'm going to drop it anytime soon. It's, it has, you know, it's where I started and it's still where my passion is. Like, I, you know, I still subscribe to uh, Gil Headley's like membership and I'm watching things about fascia. It's not where, you know, at the forefront of what I do and my, my biggest part of my business but i i don't foresee it going away i have thought about that though i don't foresee it going away anytime mm -hmm. soon yeah i suppose it's a big part like it's a big part of your brand yeah. uh yeah well, maybe more so a few years ago probably 100 yeah i think more people maybe know your name now um but yeah i, I i've been following you for, for a few years but only really when kind of i think katie and jill who are on my podcast as yeah. well they kind of they kind of love you, I think. So I kind of paid a bit more of atten attention then. But I think maybe you were one of the first people I saw who was like post every day, post every day. And I didn't post every day, but I did post relatively consistently. And that did help me a lot. So yeah. thank you for that. You are welcome. I mean, I, I throw that out there as a very, everything I throw out there is a soft suggestion. Even when I was doing the movement stuff, it's a soft suggestion of what's helped me and what I believe will help people build a habit. It's never about like, this is the, the best way to do it and the only mm -hmm. way, but we know repetition allows for us to, to build those habits that much faster. So for many people, and I don't think you fall into this category. Many people, they, they struggle to get started. They struggle to keep going. They struggle to assert themselves. They struggle to show up as themselves. And so that posting daily or doing whatever it is daily, I've found that it's typically the fastest way for them to, to step into their own and to get comfortable and confident. And then from there, they can pick whatever schedule works for them. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I think a lot of people, I kind of do, I, I, I kind of do a little bit of mentoring on this side of things, but usually it's more where it's, okay, I'm actually teaching a physio or a physical therapist yeah. or a coach about movement. And this inevitably comes up like the business side of it. And I'm really interested in the business side of it. But uh, I don't offer like that that necessarily. But um, not yet. Not yet. Maybe like it's at some, in a mentorship style, con as courses and stuff that we'll do, there will be that in it. But um, yeah. but yeah. But actually, my background is in is in business and sales. So 
but basically the re- i think the reason people stop in the first place is because maybe they're not gaining traction and people yep. aren't clicking like or commenting and i think that's kind of not a bad thing in the beginning because it allows you to fail kind of almost in secret bad. a little bit and get better <laughs> exactly. so I, I think i think just reframing that for people where okay posting consistently and not getting that much traction is a good is a good thing it's it a great you thing get yeah better. get those reps and i like that you can you can fail in, in secret absolutely <laughs> i love that yeah, if I put up a shit post now, which plenty of them are shit, but like a really shit post now, I would I would take a lot of heat for that. Whereas yeah. a couple of years ago, I could put up as many shit posts as I want. Yeah, doesn't matter. No one's seeing it. It's mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. Totally agree. Um, what do you think about the? There's definitely a stereotype, right? Where in the industry, where okay, people who like fail are fail coaches go into this business coaching side oh, yeah. of things. Um, yes. Do you run into that, or you all you the probably time. don't do you? I do. I do. And, you know, I, I, it's twofold. One, the, one, we have to look at the integrity of the person that's doing that. That's actually like not you know, grossly failing at this thing and then being like, oh, I can make money this other thing. And then the flip side, I'm you know, a big proponent of personal accountability. So, yes, the personal accountability on the side of the coach and then the personal accountability, personal responsibility on the side of the consumer that is not doing their homework and asking this person and Mm -hmm. not checking values. And I get it. People, you know, may be desperate. And whenever whenever urgency is part of the equation, it can be a big problem. We don't make the best decisions, but my big push is to have people do more research on things and take a personal responsibility. It's no different than with, with physical therapy, right? On the one side, I don't want providers providing shit treatment. That's terrible. But on the flip side, I would love for the individual to take more personal responsibility and have a bit more health literacy and and movement literacy and put in the time to try and, you know, learn about themselves and not just totally uh, outsource their own health to somebody else and just be like, well, what do you think? And what should I feel? And you tell me. So I think there's the both end of that, but I do run into that. And it is a, a big problem. And it's something actually with my own coaching that I don't love coaching people who want to coach other people. It starts to get kind of mlm and kind of culty uh, with that. So I, I don't want to be so far removed from the end user, but right? I need to know that the person I'm coaching is like coaching is working rather with the, the client. Uh, whether, and I, I t- say client instead of patient, because some people are you know, in the yoga space or in the personal training space, and they don't have necessarily patience, but I don't love being super removed from that because it is problematic. It just becomes like, well, who's actually benefiting and utilizing this and actually implementing something here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think it's, it was very important for you to be, well, successful is, uh, uh, successful is different for everyone, but like, I presume you would say you, that you were, you were pretty successful in the movement space. And you think it was important to do that and kind of tick that box before going totally. into this stuff. Totally. And that, you know, it happened. I never had a goal of doing what I'm doing now. My goal was treatment. And I realized early on that I didn't like treatment and I really loved teaching. Yeah. I really, really loved educating. I don't love treatment because I, I don't love holding people's hands forever and ever and ever. And the same thing for business coaching. Like at some point I'm like, just go and do it. I believe in you. I've given you these things. We've talked about specifically what you need and now like go do it. Yeah. So for me, it kind of, it not kind of, it 100% happened by chance. And I think that if you look at anyone's, you know, look at people's stories, you, you see that where they have sex, sex, my Jesus, they have success. <laughs> we can <laughs> talk have, about that if you want. <laughs> they have success in this arena and that lends itself to something else and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. I really, truly believe that, you know, yeah, I love social media, but if you want success, go be the absolute fucking best at whatever it is that you do. You'll have success. I don't know anyone that isn't like, the just so great at what they do, they get results, right? And when I say what they do, it's not they're great at marketing. They're so great at what they do and getting results for people. I don't know any any person who is in that category that is not experiencing tremendous success. They go yeah. hand in hand. Yeah, and then you just can amplify that a bit more. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. I w- I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I think a lot of people, they they 
they struggle to they, they're not getting great results with people and like Dad. then they don't want to maybe post on instagram or whatever it is because actually they're not confident in their job in the first Dad. place um i think when you start to become but th- those two things can improve like those qualities can go up mm-hmm. together definitely I, I always wanted to be i was really attracted to the teaching side of things as well when i f- first was going to seminars and courses like I was looking around me and I was loving what I was learning, but I was also looking at the person teaching and was like, I would love to be, do- I'd love to be that. So, uh, yeah, but the Instagram stuff helped me with my clients, helped me with, with the education, helped me with podcasting, helped me like actually just talk to people on a daily basis. It just got me more clear about how I use my words and, and concise and all of that stuff. So like you can bring up these qualities at, at the same time and Instagram, people Absolutely. bash it, people bash it like, they, but it is communication. It is getting better at yes. communication. Absolutely. Especially, you know, when we started for starting with Instagram, like I was first started in 2014 and videos were like, everything's come full circle, right? Videos were only 15 seconds long. Mm-hmm. You didn't have the option like IGTV. I know it's gone again, but we didn't have IGTV. So you had, I mean, have stories either. So you had to get things out in a concise manner. I remember doing a like ankle dorsiflexion test against the wall that, you know, everyone talks about and like being like, you have 15 seconds to do this thing very quickly. And then how can I state this and clearly explain it in the, in the caption? So I totally agree. It's such a phenomenal exercise in communication. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. What, what advice would you have to people then who are struggling maybe to get, well, either, either just struggling. They don't want to maybe, post in the first or they do want to post but they're just a bit afraid or else they're just not getting tra- much traction with it i love that you corrected very broad. that there because if people don't want to do it i'm like then don't do it yeah like <laughs> i'm not here to convince you of anything mm-hmm. uh for people that are are struggling a little bit i fully believe david that a successful online business starts in person and so double down on the people that you have in person get the best results from there from them with them and then just share that, right? Start off by sharing things that you know you are confident in. I think people try to really focus on what they think people want to hear and what they think is going to do well. And then one, you're never going to know because we're posting and interacting with humans. It's, like, it's emotional based. And also the algorithm is going to do whatever it wants. So if you're basing it on that, you're, you're never going to get started. Or if you get started, you're going to stop very quickly. So mm-hmm. number one, focus on the people who are right in front of you, preferably those, those in-person people and get the absolute best results that you can with them and then share what you do there. That's all that I ever did was I took the in-person component and like you, I wanted to get into teaching. And the reason I pulled back from teaching on the movement side is because I stopped treating and you can't do it. You cannot not be in the mm-hmm. arena and then be like, I'm going to teach about it. At some point it becomes outdated and it mm-hmm. becomes theory. So that's why I pulled back and I, I, you know, I ran my course for a year and a half, maybe and then COVID came too. So two years. And then I was like, I'm not treating nearly as much. So yeah. I'm going to stop this. So number one, double down on what you're doing in person and getting results from those people. Uh, and then number two, it's because it's the answer no one wants to hear, but it's a mindset shift. You have to have expectations of effort, not outcome. If you go in and you're like, I spent an hour doing this, I deserve this, or I need to get this, I should get this. You're going to stop. It needs to go, it needs to be, okay, my expectation is the effort that I'm going to put forth. And I'm circling back to why I'm doing this in the first place, because I want to get my ideas out there because I want to help people because I want to connect with people. Mm-hmm. Then that's what I'm focusing on. Not on this, you know, return on investment because mm-hmm. you'll stop. Mm-hmm. You'll stop. Yeah. It's a long play game. And people are like, well, how long do I do that? Give it a minimum, a minimum of 18 months of consistent concerted effort before you decide one way or the other. Yeah, I like that. Setting ex- expectations from the beginning. It's the same with your clients. If someone comes in with 10 years of knee pain and you're like, okay, you're yeah. going to be fixed in two sessions. They're <laughs> going to be very disappointed. Um, so yeah, exactly. that expectation and understanding what your current reality and where like it doesn't meet your expectations right now. It's uh, huge. Yeah, yeah I'm with you on that. And I think that's yeah. a really good answer with the, the doubling down on the in-person stuff. When I first started posting on Instagram, I didn't realize I was doing it, but I was just working with clients. And then if I was coaching a client through an exercise, some clients now, like depending on who they were, I'd be yeah. like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to film this for your homework. You're going to do this at, at, for ho- at home. So I'm going to film me coaching through the exercise. And then I just put up a clip on Instagram. 
Yeah. And I literally had this conversation with a guy earlier on this week who was saying, I want to break into, I was treating him for his shoulder. He's a trainer, but he also wants to break into the online space. He has a very successful gym. And he was like, how do I start to attract online clients? I was like, just post more stuff that you're doing in person. Yeah. And if it's cool enough, people will want to work with you online. Whereas Perfect. instead of trying to tailor this perfect content to attract online clients, just show them what you're doing in person. And I think that That's will it. carry over. I love the little things that you drop in there that are so honest and truthful. This, if it's cool enough, that but there is a very real component to that. You know, the online space is saturated and also it's come up, right? Because there are so many people doing this, mm -hmm. the quality of the I mean, people are shooting with DSLRs and like the, not, not to say that you have to do that, but understand that if you're starting out now, you are at a significant disadvantage than if you started out however many years ago. And just, you need to survey the land and be like, okay, what is the like minimum expectation from people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a higher bar than yeah. it was before. But the flip side about that is that we do have technology, like our phones shoot in you know, 4K, 60 frames per second, something even higher than that now. You can do these amazing things, but it is going to take more effort than before when we could just be like, well, here's my little iPhone and I'm going to just, it'll be good enough because yeah. no one's really doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I have, some very, I have one very successful program in particular that I shot on the worst iPhone ever <laughs> and I still sell it. I still haven't updated it, but um but yeah you can bridge that gap by yeah. not just with like not just having the best curated content but like being more charismatic or more entertaining yeah. or more educational or whatever yeah. you don't, and good yeah your stuff good. has to yeah. be good it yeah. has to get results you know ben ben patrick he's a actually a good friend of mine and his video quality has you know skyrocketed but he got to where he got because his stuff actually does work when mm -hmm. you know what people want to shit on him or not like because it's all basic foundational stuff he's not like out here doing wild things and it needs to get results whatever the thing is that you're doing it needs to be helpful and people will be like well what do I, how do i know if it's helpful again that circles back to what you and i were just talking about start with in person help people and mm -hmm. then you know it's helpful and then you go and you, and you share it mm -hmm. exactly um when you're talking to people about kind of business models are when they are breaking into the online space so you have a few different options like online coaching, uh, maybe just self programs at home, like mobility programs or whatever. Um, course, uh, uh, set, set courses mm -hmm. that you can take on your own membership sites or selling workshops and going traveling. It, do you pre have a preference towards one or how Absolutely. would you, how do you avoid, avoid uh, uh, how do you give people advice around that? Absolutely. I do absolutely have a preference for that because I oftentimes see people kind of put the cart before the horse and they create the product before they have the audience. The whole thing, my whole shtick is I, I'm a content creator through and through. I am a content marketer through and through, which means I'm going to create, I'm going to see what lands, I'm going to listen to the people and see what problems they have. And then I'm going to make something based on that. Mm -hmm. So typically when you're first starting, your first thing should be share information, have a single offer, which is usually going to be your one-on-one -on -one service of just remote coaching. So you can have a simple thing that you put together, an offer that you put together for that, right? One-on-one -on -one is the easiest because there's the most trust there. Yeah. It's usually a higher price point for things, but there's the most trust because you are with that person and it's like, Hey, I'm going to deliver this service and I'm going to make sure you get these results. And then from there, we can look and see, where's my audience going? How much, in, you know, time investment do they have? What problem do they need solved? And what's my audience size? If you happen to blow up and have a massive audience with, with trust, then yeah, you can go for a volume model and do a membership and, you know, have a low touch and have it be mostly DIY or do it yourself. The issue with people wanting to do that right out of the gate is that most people, we've all done it, right? We go and we sign up for something or we buy some DIY program and then we never do it. It goes to the desktop graveyard and it just sits there forever, right? The problem with that is that when people don't do the thing, they don't get results. And when they don't get results, they don't become repeat customers and they don't tell anyone about you. That's the bigger thing to me is that they don't spread your message for you. They don't get results. And the best way that we see messages being spread is someone gets better and their friends are like, dude, what did you do? Right? Kathy Sierra calls this word of obvious. Like what, what you look so good. You're moving so well, whatever it is. 
I got it. I want to do that thing. And then they're like, oh, let's go to David's program. And, you know, you go and do that. But when you start off with DIYs, that can make it really, really tough. And I think that something people that need people need to be cognizant of, and I love that you brought this up before, is the person that you're following, the person whose model you're looking to emulate, are they going B to B or are they going B to C, right? B to B, those you don't know, is business to business, whereas B to C is business to consumer. Selling to your peers, selling to people that have something to gain financially will always be easier than selling to someone who's like the average consumer. That's like, I got to get out of pain or I have this issue. Totally different markets, totally different approaches. And for most people that are listening to this that are looking to go B to C, your best bet as a first offer is going to be some sort of one-on-one coaching. And then from there, when you get the reputation, you get the eyes, you have the audience, you have the trust, and you have this repeatable system, then you can look at, into, into diversifying. And it can be that you do you have some DIY things that you sell, mm-hmm. you have some group program things that you run. But for me, first, it's create the content, attract the audience, see what problem they actually have, and then create a solution for them. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh, I think Seth Godin, I heard him talking about that before where someone, someone asked him if you had six months to write a book, what would you do? And he said, I'd spend five months building my email list and then, <laughs> and then write the book, one month writing the book. I love uh, that. Yeah. Yes. So once you have the <laughs> eyeballs on you, you can do a lot of things you can figure out from there, but people make the, make the programs first. That doesn't yeah, work. I'm like, that is really really tough. And I, you know, I've done posts about this and I always get like the one person in the comments. that's like, I know someone who one time did it the other way and it worked. And it's like, yeah, I bet they spend a shit ton of money on ads yeah. or they just got lucky, but let's not try to default to the exception to the rule. Mm-hmm. Let's think about in general for the majority of people, what is going to be the best route. It's typically that. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Definitely. Um, and like what you're saying about the, the desktop, the desktop graveyard, um, you're getting that, that in that case, like you feel great that you made a sale, but you're not actually getting a customer Dad. and as a customer you're looking for, not a sale, just one Dad. sale. Like you're going to really struggle if you're always making one sale to people. That, yeah, that, that David, yeah. do you have one of those old school pens right now? Hold this your thing, pen. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had to buy it the other day because I keep chewing up my pens and this one is more durable. Yeah, so you'll actually see me chewing on my pen all the time. Um, so yeah, I love it. Um, you have to distract me now. I'm sorry, I was, it's the important stuff there. Like, what is that pen? You have the old school, yes. Um, no, what, oh yeah, this, what you're saying there is actually where I'm struggling at the moment because I was like, okay, I was doing my online coaching one-to-one programs and stuff like that. And actually the programs were so successful that that was like yeah. people share that stuff, yeah. right? I, I mean, I, I would have I would have given them away for free based on the amount of people that shared them, but I was able to make some money and get that kind of traction at the same time. But the issue was, I think some of the programs, this is me saying this, I think some of the programs were, were so good and so successful that I ended up with a lot of coaches and physios saying, okay, I'm going to buy that program to see why all these people are mm-hmm. getting results. And then I ended up with it. I, I have ended up with an audience that's probably like split 50-50 down yep. the middle coaches yeah. and therapists here p- other people over here the coaches and therapists are buying a program for 50 bucks that they can use with a thousand clients and it's going yep. to make them a lot of money and the and, and it's probably a 50 buck program for someone who has knee pain and actually that's maybe what it's worth to them so i end up like just completely lost in the middle and that's my biggest yeah. problem right now yeah i love hearing things like this and it's so real i Good problems are still problems that yeah. you have, right? It's a good problem to have. It's still a problem that I have. I need to do something about it. And look, you know, knowing your content, uh, Katie, Katie St. Clair and, and Jill very much like in the same boat where as soon as you lean more towards the educational side of things, you're going to get more, you're going to get attract peers, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not here to say, I'm, I never want to, you know, boo boo the average consumer, uh, but many times they want just the outcome, right? They want that more than the educational side of things, which is fine. I'm not, again, not here to say one way or the other, uh, but yeah. What are you, what are you, how are you handling it? Good. I've made more of a focus now, like this podcast, for instance, I'm talking about, I'm talking about educational stuff. 
right? Yeah. So coaches and therapists are going to listen to it. Now we get some gen pop and whatever, but they're interested in movement. Like it's just maybe not their job or they're interested yep. in yep. hopefully and they, even to listen to this podcast because they're just interested. Uh, but the, the just the, the, the Joe Soap, I'm, I'm moving away from that a little bit. I get some yeah. of them. But my language on Instagram has gone more technical recently. Yeah. Whereas before, Did you say Joe Soap? Yeah, That's Joe what Soap. You, I love that. You've never heard that before. <laughs> never heard that. And I love that. Joe okay. Soap. <laughs> that's your, that maybe it's an Irish thing. I don't know. Your average Joe Soap. That's what we would say. Um, so, yeah, I'm doing okay. But we have our we have a membership site now. So we have a few like different business models. What are you, what are your products? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, of course you don't. Of course uh, I don't. I guess here to chat. Yeah. I love this. I love it. I love it. Uh, so if I go from the bottom up, so I call it from my value ladder. Bottom up, obviously, you can be all my free content, uh, my podcast, and then my next levels that actually make sense from, from a product standpoint. I have a bunch of DIY now um, webinars. Like I love running webinars. I love them. You get to interact with people in real time. You're teaching. I love it. It's a low price point. It's a low barrier to entry for those folks. I absolutely love yeah, it. And it's a nice easy me, win for them. Right? I'm like, yeah. if they actually take advantage, I'm like, to me, it's such a huge value. I'm like, I the most I ever charge for a webinar is like maybe $35. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's a webinar, so it's cheap. But I'm like, to me, I'm like, you can get massive, massive value out of this if you attend or if you watch the replay, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have a bunch of those the next level up. Uh, from there, I have only one DIY, like true DIY self-paced course. Mm-hmm. To me, the difference between that webinar and DIY self-paced course, I broke it up, right? It has chapters. You can go and you know pick which one you want to be watching, rewind things, whereas the webinar just is a replay straight through. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, I go into my membership. It's called the my sort of the mafia. And that is just a, not just, that is a group of about 160, I think we have, uh, movement, health, wellness, and adjacent professionals. And I created it because I saw the magic of being in the room and what happens when people who are doing things get together. And I've been privy to so many rooms and I've been privy to so much help from from other people, from peers and, and, and mentors that I didn't have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for. And I was like, I want to recreate this. I can't create it in person, but I can do it online. And I had people that I've just met from all my travels and just from all the coaching that I did, you know, all the the teaching that I did rather. So I created that and it is basically a, uh, we'll call it a choose your own adventure style business coaching. So it's largely DIY. We do two dinners a month where I, teach them one of them. I bring in a guest speaker for the other dinner. A uh, bunch of resources are in there. And to me, I, I think the biggest value is the Facebook group where people are, they're sharing their experiences. They're asking for support when needed. And it's just a community. That's really the biggest thing there. Uh, and then from there, I run my six week, my signature offers, my six week Instagram intensive, which is all things Instagram for folks that want to learn how to use Instagram for business you already know me in that it's not just like, here's how you go viral. The whole concept with the intensive is helping people step into themselves and show up as themselves on Instagram. It gets them started. Yeah, we go for all the technical stuff, but it gets them started. And then it's again, that 18 months. So I'm like, you only need six, six weeks together, lay the foundation. And now you go rinse and repeat. Uh, And then from there I do one off Uh, So we call them consults, right? I call them maestro meeting, one-off consults with people that started out from a movement perspective. Those were how I used to treat virtually. Mm -hmm. And then it switched into more of business and some kind of life coaching at times um, that we do those one-off calls. And then I have a mentor mind that Jill Coleman and I run together and it's for intermediate plus online business owners, females only at this point. And we take them through six months of running an online business, setting it up going through the launch style models, also going through waitlist style launching. That's my preference, uh, creating offers, marketing, copying, all those things. So mm-hmm. that's the gamut of, of things nice. that I, that I have. Do, do you expect or typically see people like kind of going through that ladder? Yeah. 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 And so it's also the model that I teach, right? So I have a freebie that I created a that I created from a webinar. So it ties into what you're saying before I created, I ran a webinar and one of the slides in that webinar, it was the webinar was called how to price your shit because people 
get so hung up on that. <laughs> so it was a webinar, webinar about that. It was $15, which was very strategic. And I explained that during the webinar. And one of the slides was this value ladder. And it was just like, you know, a pictorial representation of different ways that you can interact with your audience and provide value for your, for your audience. And people loved it. And I was like, I had no idea that your brain didn't work this way. And you didn't have this written already. I had no <laughs> yeah. idea, Dave. I was like, oh, okay. So let me turn this into like a little ebook so that people can understand where things are, you know, where, what I mean by this. And so it's largely what I teach people and what we just kind of went over where we have that content, which is the bottom of the pyramid or bottom of the ladder. And then the one-on-one -on -one offer, which is typically the highest. And then from there, we look to fill it in. And I typically recommend you fill it in from the bottom up, lower investment things for people mm -hmm. so they can just get a taste. They can decide how much, you know, how, how, if you're worth it, if they like you, it gives them the time and then they can, they typically move up through that. Yeah. There's always the, the, you know, some people that just go right to the top, of course. But for the most part, you see people going through. Yeah, love it. It's great. That's really good. I have a very, very similar model. Um, when I sat down one day and wrote it out, it was, it was, it was so smart. I, it yeah. wasn't like planned. It was totally. just like, okay, here's what I have, and I would, and bought. I tried to write it out. Where I was like, okay, people come in through Instagram. And then I'm going to split them. So you're going to go be gen pop and you're going to go down to this ladder and you're going to be coaches and therapists. You're going down here. It just didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So after like a week, I was like, no, I need yeah. to do that. Uh, yeah, that's tough. It's it tough here. for the split audience. That is really, really, yeah, really tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's two different businesses. It is. Mm -hmm. It is, which is why when people first start working with people, especially you know, most people come into the, the intensive and they're like, I have, I'm multi-passionate. I have two audiences. I have three things I want to do. And I'm like, well, that's cool. But to borrow from my friend, Dr. Erica Bonilla, you can't ride two horses with one ass. So <laughs> ride the first one mm -hmm. and then you can go into the other one if you decide you want to. It's just so, so incredibly difficult to try and have that to do the both at the same time. So difficult. Especially if you're just starting. It's one thing in your case, a little different because it like it happened, it evolved. Here's where we're at. When people go into it and they're like, I want to do this and this. And I'm like, that's going to mm -hmm. be really, really tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It takes enough energy and whatever yes. to build one thing. To do one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think, look, I think that I, I really like that value ladder. When I, I have more of a graph thing where it's like, it's, it's the same thing. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I really, really yeah. like it. I think it's nice for people to understand that because I think when they see someone like you and it's like, okay, they have all these things. How do I help that? Like, that's so big for me to even think about getting there. But then when you actually break it down, it's like, no, actually it probably didn't happen where you sat yeah. down from the beginning exactly. years ago and wrote this out. It just was like <laughs> one thing, then one the next thing, thing and the next thing. I totally. Mm -hmm. And it ties back into, I know you do them the same thing. You listen to what people need. It started off. I started off with that one-on-one -on -one offer. And then from there I went and I was doing social media the whole time through that. Uh, my intensive, which is my signature offer now happened by accident, David, I created a DIY actually. So I was getting a ton of questions about Instagram a ton of questions about growing an audience. And I was like, I will make a course for you about this. So I ran a challenge, took people through it and then sold the course and it did exceptionally well. But people said, mm, we want more than this though. We want you to be teaching it. And I was like, but also I made this just by this thing. <laughs> and they're like, that's fine. But we want other things. So I did a Seth Godin and I had an email list, you know, going at that time as well. And I communicated with people and I've really found out what would be most helpful. And, you know, there's a fine line with polling your audience and asking things. The questions need to be more direct and, and more of like this or this, not like, tell me anything. Yeah. Uh, but I built that and that became hugely successful and I really like doing it. And, and it lends itself to that same model we we're speaking of before, where when you're doing something with someone, they tend to get better results because they're doing it as opposed mm -hmm. to the DIY, which I have actually retired the DIY because I couldn't keep up with changing it because Instagram changes every five minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just take people through it and then they tell other people. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the easiest things for me to launch because it mm -hmm. has a reputation and people, they can tell other people. Yeah, that's awesome. Does um does the membership so the membership comes before that? So anyone can go into the membership without having done the course. So the membership doesn't. The membership is like an interesting kind of thing. The membership kind of sits over here. I have it like if I was to, to lay it out on the value ladder, uh, 
it's in this, what I call like a level five, but typically the way that people go into it now is from the intensive, yeah. All right? So they get exposure to that. They decide they want more. They want more of the community. Mm-hmm. They want the kind of ongoing community, even though I, I, I allow people to stay in the Facebook group for my intensive forever. I'm like, this is the way that for me, one of the promises I make with that offer is that this will be the, I will be the last Instagram coach you ever need to hire. Mm-hmm. And the fact that Instagram changes means that I need to give them continued access to something. So they stay in the Facebook group forever. But for folks who want more of my approach for doing things as it relates to business and they want other people that subscribe to that same philosophy, they will, I'll invite them into the uh, mafia. Uh, The mafia largely is at this point um, referral only. And then I open the doors officially uh, two-ish times a year. Okay. So it's a little bit different than other things, mainly because I want to have the control over it. It's not my signature offer. It is something that's kind of just near and dear to my heart. So I run it a little bit differently than I would advise other people if that's going to be their signature offer, where they Mm -hmm. they have volume model and they want people coming in, then I would say Mm -hmm. to do it differently. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm getting like a free consult off you here. (laughs) (laughs) I love this stuff. It's so fun to talk about. Yeah. Yes, because we have our, so we launched our membership site last year. So I was, I was so, we've, we've all our programs and stuff like that. We had a couple of webinars, I kind of, actually, I didn't retire them. I just put them into the membership site uh, so that people can watch them as part of that. But yeah, I was so, couldn't figure out. I knew I wanted to do a course. So like an intensive course, yeah. which I haven't done yet. And then I was thinking I need to do a membership for the people after that. Right. So yep. continued support. But yep. I couldn't figure out how to get people up to a certain level. I know I know our co- intensive course will sell really well. Like it will. It will just be sold out. And mm-hmm. hopefully that doesn't Absolutely. sound arrogant. It no, just it doesn't. Will, it just that's, will happen. That's a fact. It's a fact. It is a fact. Yeah. And um, it's a fact. And um, so we just opened a membership first before we did the course. And then we have 500 members in there. And then I'm only going to open the intensive course to the people, to the members. So Love it. only the members can get that. But then maybe I can have a higher level membership after that as well, where they get more access maybe to me. I'm just thinking out loud. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I mean, that's realistically how, in my mind, the value ladder works is that as you go up, you get more direct as- access and specific access to the creator. And in this mm-hmm. case, that would be you. And you, you know, once you have the eyes, you've done the hard part, right? You have the trust and then you get to choose how do I best want to serve these people? Do I want to, you have the volume model already with the membership as kind of like the bottom there. And then from there, people can go into the course and then you can create this also very aspirational, smaller group kind of thing. That's like, you know, mastermind, mentor mind, whatever you want to call it. I know that these names have become so like almost icky because of how the marketing and predatory nature, Um, but there's something definitely very valuable. And I think that when people are looking to create offers, that's what needs to be at the forefront is what am I trying to deliver? What problem am I I trying to solve with this? Mm -hmm. What's the best way to solve it? Okay. I will make it, I will make this thing then in this Mm -hmm. specific way. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm excited to see what you do, David. I'll do I'll do the course I'll do the course but then it's just trying to figure out there probably will be a higher level higher level mentorship after that for continued support we'll see yeah. um, but the membership just helped me filter out people because there's all I'm t- basically teaching everything I know in there anyway but then it's not as much access to me like one to our That's small it. groups and stuff yeah it's a leverage model absolutely yeah. absolutely I mean yes to me I also and, you know, I maybe take heat for it. I don't love sliding scales. I don't love discounts. I don't love scholarship things because I have strategically created so many different offers that can meet people where they're at. Mm-hmm. I have found that, yes, I know there, ex- there are extenuating circumstances, but for much of the time, part of the transformation, if you will, comes with the transaction and the investment that people put in. And I get it. Everyone's investment is all relative, like $500 for somebody, maybe, you know, it's very different than $500 for somebody else. I get that. But my goal in, in, in the way I create stuff is to kind of pull that, make it objective and be like, Hey, you can still have access to these principles that I'm teaching and you can get a ton out of it Mm -hmm. at this level. Mm -hmm. I teach the same stuff, you know, so much of it on Instagram if that's where you're at, you can piece it together for free. I have mm-hmm. so many people that message me and are like, I got started, I did this, I did this, and now I'm doing this because I followed your content. And yeah. I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah, big time, it. big time. That's 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 the thing is 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 like I never feel bad about charging money because firstly I'm trying to give more value than I charge, and secondly, yep. like if people don't want to pay, they can still go on my Instagram and see bad. so much stuff. So much. Yeah. And same with yours, like I'm sure they could figure out their whole whole, own online, our whole own course, or your course through like piecing this, all this stuff together, but just takes a lot of time. It is. And also they don't get the same kick in the ass that it's like, okay, you're in this group now and this is what you're going to do. That. And so that's why we have those different tiered offers. And I also am very transparent with all of my pricing for things because I'm like, if you want to save up for it, I don't want to like have it secret that you like don't know the price of anything till like the very end. And like people want to know and here's the prices. And I tell people when it's coming back, like I'm never like, this is the last time ever that you can sign up for this thing. Like, no, you can sign up in February if you want, <laughs> like it'll mm-hmm. be back. Mm-hmm. If right now is not good, nothing good ever came from anything forced. Yeah. You can take it the next time. I'm fine with it and we'll make it work. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I really do. The eye, the, like having the eyes on you, you can you can you can come out with whatever course or product you want now actually that puts pressure on for me i think about that a lot because i could sell a lot of different things now which makes more pressure because i know if i bring out something people will buy it so now i'm more conscious about making sure it's better than it was in the beginning so that trust like you can break that trust very easily if you just because you guaranteed no matter what product you come out with people will buy it yeah but that means that it has to be good Yeah. I love that you actually care. I think that a lot of people think the other way and kind of are just like, I can do whatever and trust you can break it, but it's a lot harder once you've earned it to break it. Like, especially if you've, if you're really genuine and kind, if you make a mistake, right. People will justify it for you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they know like you meant well, right? They know that you did have their best interests at heart. And so it's actually really nice to hear you say that, that you don't take that for granted and that it actually makes you want to level up even more because you do have that trust. I, I'd like to think that everyone feels that way. I don't think that's the case, that's the oh, case at all. It's just like, okay, what else can I sell? I'm just going to yeah. make some other piece like, of shit. And sell, exactly. sell <laughs> like, that's bad. Don't make yeah. that. Up. Yeah. But people can see through that very quickly as well. Yeah. yeah. Big time. Uh, totally. Big time. <laughs> um what um so so much of your business is built through instagram yeah how do you mitigate against that or do you that the fact that there's a risk involved with that for sure obviously the membership the membership obviously does your email list and stuff like that that's it that's the number one thing for me is that you get contact points with people in other places it's twofold for me one it is from the actual oh are you there david okay sorry it froze for a second uh I think it's twofold for on the one hand, it is exactly what you said. You move the connection and communication to something that you quote unquote own. Maybe you don't own social media, so it doesn't matter. It's not like, oh, well, I'm going to go to TikTok because that could go away as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want to diversify your platforms, cool, but you need to then have people on your email list and you need to have people, you know, the membership as well. Something that like, I don't run the membership on uh, Facebook. Like we have a Facebook group, but the membership runs through member press, like it's outside of it. So having that uh, guaranteed, if you will, that safer um, communication with people. For those of you that have an email list, make sure that you're backing up that email list at least quarterly as well. Because if that, whatever you're using for email goes away, then suddenly you're like, oh no, they're all gone. Uh, so that's number one. And then number two, David, is honestly self-trust. I would bet on myself 12 out of 10 times. And that is also why I am now doing what I'm doing. I didn't, I didn't grow up being like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I actually wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. Uh, I went to PT because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to med school, but then quickly, you know, things happened and evolved and, you know, you start to learn your no and you learn your yes. And suddenly i have my own business and I have learned that for me, that's actually the safest bet that if something terrible was to happen, I could do something else. I could, I could go and treat again if I mm-hmm. really, really needed I could go and build something again if I had to. I don't want to yeah. <laughs> at all. That sounds terrible, but like I have so much trust that I could do it mm-hmm. that I'm not like every day, like, oh my God, what if, what if, what if? So I put in the actual tangible safety net of I'm going to, you know, have other ways of communicating with people and maintaining contact. And then I'm also, I have self trust that I could do it and I could build something else and be successful. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think you could too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because me, look, all these mediums will change, but like yeah. at the end of the day, the principles re- remain the same, and that's the same with the movement stuff as well. That's it. Good solid principles. Good. That's it. And uh, I yeah. get it. I, I do, I do, I do, I do worry about it sometimes, sometimes, but then again, I know I'm just, I'm similar. I know like, okay, I probably, I would probably sulk for a couple of days and then I exactly. just get on with it. I would cry. Absolutely. I'd be like, this is the worst ever. And then we'd have to move on. But yeah. What do you think's coming next, David? I don't know. I tried to do some TikTok videos and i just realized it's not gonna work for me no i know man i like took my my tiktok handle and then i was like this is the worst i can't (laughs) i can't do this yeah oh yeah especially you're in the education space now and it's just kids on it if you wanted to get some young athletes young clients you could pretty easy i know some coaches that are doing that and um but yeah like i'm posting on tiktok and it's 16 year olds tagging their friends like okay look at this look at this and they're never going to be my customers yeah it's i agree i'm just like ah i also don't have like the thick enough skin yet you need a thick skin on tiktok like people are mean and i'm like i don't want to deal with that so i'm gonna stay on instagram as as much as people shit on the algorithm it's actually very protective and mm-hmm. it makes for a nicer user experience. You don't just get shown to someone that has completely different values and beliefs and ideologies than you. It doesn't happen. Whereas on TikTok, that's probably the best part of the platform because you can have such wild organic growth, but mm-hmm. that means that you are also going to have wild organic growth. And can you de- handle the comments and things like that? I am sensitive. So I don't want to be doing that right now, maybe one day. Yeah. Uh, but for now, I'm going to just continue with with Instagram and, uh, you know, the podcast and, and writing and, and email and, and such. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. I don't think Instagram is going away anytime soon, but I don't know. Sometimes I'm like, I think I have, sometimes I have a lot of faith in Zuck. And then other times I'm like, mm-hmm. he's just lost it. Maybe. Yep. So I don't know. I'm not right? sure. It, again, I totally agree. I totally, I think there's such a, you know, we take a step back and look at Instagram and I think it's such a valuable lesson in marketing and running a business just in terms of uh, who said, it? I think actually I was talking to Sharon says so the other day, I love her. Um, and she, we were talking about Instagram and how basically Instagram is trying so hard to just be TikTok. And when to when something tries so hard to be something else, it's so easy to say which one is better. Yeah. It's so easy. You're like, that is that is worse. Whereas if you double down on like what makes you good at what you do, like I think Instagram is so unique in that it has all these different facets of the platform where if you like to read, mm-hmm. we have long captions. Mm-hmm. If you want to watch video, we do have the longer videos. You want shorter things, cool. You want just images, we have that. You want to see someone's life? Cool. We have stories. There's just so many different parts. Mm -hmm. And I wish they would just leave that and be like, hey, this is what we do and consume whatever part you want instead of like, we're going to do this other thing to try and be like this other thing. Because then it's very easy to see like, but you're not as good as that other thing. Yeah. In the past, they would have just bought TikTok and then they had TikTok and Instagram, but now they're not allowed. So. (laughs) I wish they could still buy TikTok. I know. I totally agree. <laughs> so, so, I don't know. I don't know. We need a new, you need a new president over, president over there and change the rules or something like that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I agree. You know, I at the agree. bottom of the value ladder, what would you say to people who say like, okay, you're get, with the free content stuff that you actually are giving out too much free content and people won't buy your stuff if you give out that it much free content. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And I know that like where that comes from and that mindset and that fearfulness and, you know, the words always around the scarcity mindset. Uh, I get that. And I will say from personal experience, from coaching experience, from seeing other people, from all the experience that people will pay you to say it again. People will pay you to package it for them. People will pay you to make it specific to their issue. People will pay you to say it when they're ready to hear it. Mm -hmm. So I do not believe that that exists, right? Because the thing about it, the way that we deliver content on Instagram is in small little bits. Like it's not a three hour course that you're teaching. It's one little general piece of information about this general problem, right? General solution to general problems. The people that are savvy enough to be able to string together and and apply to themselves. Amazing. I love that. Good for them. That's like 1%, probably less than 1% of people, right? 
everyone else, they're going to pay because it's not their job. I think we forget this. And we also kind of forget how good maybe we are at things. I love that you said earlier, like that it will sell out and it will because you're phenomenal at what you do. I think people don't realize how good they are. They take it for granted and they think about, well, I wouldn't pay for it. And I'm like, of course you wouldn't because you already know it. This is your Mm -hmm. job. Like, why would you pay for that? But if you were talking about some other thing that you don't know about that you don't really care to learn about that you're not proficient at, you will pay it because Mm -hmm. that's not your expertise. So I think people are very much just kind of being like, if I was the consumer trying to buy this thing that I already know that I'm already an expert in, of course you wouldn't buy it. You wouldn't Mm -hmm. pay for it, but everybody else, man, it's not their job. They have kids, they have lives, they have other interests. They want to go to someone who they trust to tell them something that, yeah, they could probably Google for the most part. Mm -hmm. They don't have time for that. They want someone they trust to give it to them specifically for them in a way they understand yeah. when they're ready to to hear it and learn it and utilize it yeah 100 percent. yeah i know per- personally whenever or two things personally on my business side of things the more i give away for free the better the better more money we make by far yes. <laughs> by yes. far and then secondly the more someone gives me away from f- money or things for free the less i will watch them things the more i'm like no i will wait till they release a yes. course and then i'll buy it Exactly. Because uh, I just exactly. can't motivate myself to do it otherwise. Exactly. You know who first kind of put me onto this was I looking at Greg Cook's stuff. His entire I love Greg Cook. I think he's a phenomenal teacher because he's just so good at you know making it digestible for all different kinds of people. But his entire SFMA is in that book, Movement. The whole thing mm-hmm. is in there. The whole thing. I don't know. The book is like $70, maybe. I don't know. But here we all are, here we are all going to this three day course, two day course for 500, 800, $1,000. It's literally in the book there, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you want to hear it from him you, or whoever, you know, is teaching it now. You want to hear it so that you can ask questions. You want to hear it explained in more detail. You want to be in the room. There's yeah. so many factors and yes, I will pay for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I think people underestimate that, that the energy side of it and uh you know when you see someone good teaching you're in a room it's magic it's magic yeah yeah so 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 good so good it's magic there's just so much around it because it's like the delivery is amazing Mm -hmm. but then you are able to think about all the things that went into that that the the acquisition of that knowledge and the passion that they have for this thing and how much time they've invested in this thing and Mm -hmm just all of these things coming together it's it's absolutely magic and then all the other yeah. people that are inspired and excited and you can learn from them and hear from them and you get excited it's just it's phenomenal mm-hmm. yeah it, m- it massively breaks the glass ceiling like if you if you didn't go to them courses you were sitting at home you were working yourself with a couple of colleagues you're, you're so you have this ceiling on you that you don't yeah. even realize is there and then you go to a course and maybe it's someone that you see online and you see, okay, like they're so much better than me. They do all of these things unbelievably well. How do they know all this stuff? And then you go to court, you go to the course and you see, okay, you start to be able to piece the puzzle together of how they got to that stage. Yep. And suddenly just like that, just like the, the building, the Instagram or the value ladder, like it doesn't become as much of a mystery. And ah. it really you, you start to think, okay, actually maybe I could be much better than I am. Right that. Now. That that's a phenomenal point, and I'm not sure how many people internalize that. So I love that you brought that up because that is it humanizes people in a really in really in, inspiring, inspirational way. And suddenly you're like, maybe I could. I, I that happened to me, right? I my first foray into Instagram, like I said earlier, was because I was doing CrossFit. I wanted to learn more, and you know, there's K stars doing stuff at the time, uh, Wild Dog doing stuff at the time. But I also found uh, my now self-appointed mentor, uh, Perry Nicholson. And I was just like, this guy's amazing. And went to his rock tape course and it changed my life. David, that going to one course changed my life. I had, you know, I had interacted with him. We were friends on, on Instagram at that point. I was communicating with him a lot and I went to the course for him, right? I was looking into the kinesiology tape. I was interested in learning more. I worked in the city at the New York city at the time. A lot of it was marathon season. So everybody's coming in with tape and I was like, what is this? Mm-hmm. And clients are putting it on themselves. And I was like, maybe I should learn what you're doing here. Uh, so I took the course for him because one of my other friends was like, actually, no, take a rock tape course. Like they teach you more than just taping. Like, I think you'll like that. So I went for him and 
like you said, I saw like suddenly a road to that. Like maybe I could do more. I could do this. Like before I was already disenchanted with the model and disenchanted for being a physical therapist, but I didn't really know what else there was out there. And then I saw him doing that. And I was like, there's a different way to treat. There's a different way to assess. And there's a different way to be in this profession. Holy mm-hmm. shit. And I asked him, I was just like, Hey, I want to, how do I become an instructor for this? And that's that one course. Now one question, David changed my life. It changed mm-hmm. everything. Awesome. Everything. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Put these people on a pedestal and then you now look, I, you probably should put Elon Musk on a pedestal. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, I'll probably never put, I personally will probably <laughs> never put a rocket on Mars. Um, but like, a lot of other people are not like that. They just yeah. they just had good mentors and stuff along the way. Yeah. And they, they were exposed to the right people at the right time. So that's why yeah. courses are so key. Absolutely. Um, I love yeah. that you brought that up, David. I love that. What else do you, what else do you have for me? I'm I'm kind of out of well, not that I had questions, but I'm out of I'm out of no. chat. Not that well, no, I could chat for a long time, but <laughs> I'm out of chat. Uh have you ever been asked that question before? No, I'm what, usually like, no, else, this is what great. Else do you have for me. What else do I got? I got uh, that for me, my whole shtick, and it's been in like kind of underpinning, overarching theme forever. And all the things that I've done, they've largely been vehicles to help people live their best life. Like it's not the best life, live whatever their best life is. And So much of, you know, I love coming on podcasts like this and love talking about different things and talking to other people that are excited about what they do, because that's, that's for me at the end of the day, that's all that I want is for people to be able to go after what makes them happy. Like I use Instagram as a vehicle and it will largely, it will likely not largely, it will likely change. Right. So I started off with the movement space. I love movement because movement shows people hope and it gives people hope. And it opens their eyes to possibility because they're like, I couldn't do that before. And now I could. Yeah. Even something as simple, you know, deadlifting is so powerful. Like I couldn't do that. And now I can. What else could I something do? Something changed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, like exactly. what, what else? So that was the first vehicle and, you know, movement, PT space, then going into, you know, coaching and the online business kind of stuff and, you know, using Instagram and just helping people share their voice. And I love when people decide, like, actually, I hate using Instagram, but I know what I want to be doing Mm -hmm. and I know how I want to be spending my time. And I'm like, that's amazing. I'm not here to force anyone to use, Mm -hmm. to use Instagram. So, you know, coming on this podcast and getting to talk to you is just, it makes me so happy because I get to connect with a human that's so passionate about what he's doing and loves how he's showing up and loves what he's going after. And that for me is, that's all I want. Sweet. <laughs> that's simple. Awesome. Uh, where should people go to find you? Uh, Instagram is always the easiest. The Movement Maestro. Maestro is spelled M-A-E-S-T-R-O. I know it's not the easiest to spell, but uh, there it is for you. And the link in the bio has everything. Uh, my my website's the same, themovementmaestro.com. Shoot me a DM. I live in my DMs. I have very much curated and created a life that I get to show up in the way that makes me happy and in the way that I want. And I wanted, I learned at some point, I was like, I want to have Instagram be part of my job. I love mm-hmm. it that much. I love connecting with people. So that is likely something that I will never outsource as well as my business. So if you DM me, it's me, it's not anybody else, not Rupert, my cat or anything like that. It is me. That's my assistant, right? Uh, it's going to be me. So I'd love to, to connect and come say hello. I really should answer my DMs. <laughs> I mean, it's what I want to do. You mm. don't have to do it. I don't. I, I some of them, but uh, I just don't like it. <laughs> yeah, that. I love that, David. I love that. I hope that everyone listening to this hears that and is like, this is wonderful. I, when I coach people, I'm never like, you have to do this. It's what I enjoy and it's how I enjoy running my business. If it's not for people, I think it's so important that they establish that. And then they're very upfront with how they do want to be coaching and how they do want to be working with people, interacting. Like email is like the worst for me. I know. Or email I didn't is worse. Email, yeah. Right? I, Maybe I just don't like talking to people. <laughs> Definitely it's email. the worst. Oh. Like, oh my goodness. Email is the worst. And I actually hate the voice notes inside of Instagram because I, I can't like. I leave voice notes. I, I leave voice notes to up. people. And I'm like. But only ah. when they write to me first. That. So obviously, like, I wouldn't send you a voice note out of nowhere. I wouldn't. That, but that right there. Some DMs that I did. Sorry, I shouldn't say I hate answering DMs. 
I just get a lot of shit DMs from people mm. who is like, uh, fix my knee. And oh, God, off, David. I, off, that right? sounds horrendous. David. Yeah, it is horrendous. Yeah. <laughs> that it is, is horrendous. I don't miss those days yeah. at all. That is terrible. I actually did a post one time that said, nobody wants to have their brain picked. And maybe I should have written, I don't want to have my brain picked. But I think it's the worst. I love conversations. I love over delivering. I love running Instagram lives. I do love giving things away for free, mm -hmm. but I don't like when people come in with their hand out expecting something mm -hmm. and offering nothing. I think that is terrible. Yeah. So I was like, I have to put it, I'm going to put a boundary up with this, but I love that. I love that. You're like, I don't like doing that. It's amazing. Yeah. I want everyone listening to yeah. lean into what you'd like and lean away from the things you don't yeah. run your business people don't you even want. say people don't even say hello like hi david Dad. it's just like, yeah, I'm like, like you owe them something what kind of a person are you that you don't like, even say please or thanks uh, no that's you know. i'm sorry you received those david that's terrible <laughs> but, uh, i do get lots of nice ones as well that i try to reply to but not uh not as much as i should um okay cool thank you so much for coming on i really david, appreciate it thank you so so very much this has been incredible Congrats on the impending nuptials and your trip. And thank you for making the time. I truly, truly appreciate it. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed that episode with Shante. I thought it was very, very good. Hopefully it was very useful. I think the business side of things is really, really important. I know obviously this, we talk about a lot of movement and stuff here, but when I was starting this podcast, I wanted to call it the Movement Business Podcast. Don't steal that name, but uh, I wanted to be able to talk about movement stuff and business stuff and the business of movement. And we don't have to be experts in the business side of things, but if you're a coach or a therapist or whatever, actually, to be honest, anyone should be able to pick up some, some good tips from that podcast, no matter what industry they were in. But like, if you want to have longevity in your career and you want to be able to help as many people as possible, and you want to enjoy your career and enjoy your job on a day-to-day -day basis, then like you do need some kind of business skills, even if at the moment you're not running your own business, maybe you have a longer term, longer term vision to do that, or maybe it just helps you understand your worth a little bit better for if you are working for someone or something like that. So I think it's, it's really, really important to have some, some knowledge uh, on that side of things. And it's not like, I, I, I don't need to be rich. I, not, I was going to say I don't want to be rich I'd love to be rich but like that's not a big massive goal of mine only. it's more about just having freedom financial freedom where okay I'd love I'd love options I'd love to be able to work when I want to work and maybe not work as much when I want don't want to work as much and maybe work from different places and like decide on how many hours a week I want to work and decide where I want to live and all of these things so financial freedom that's like that's huge for me and just understanding the business side of things is really important and I I, I know everyone one won't love it, but I want to talk about that more and I hope it helps people as well. So um, last thing, make sure you join up on DJR Interactive. We just passed 500 members there and I'm really chuffed. We, we're after growing much faster than I thought we did. And um, we have a pretty seriously good group of people there. I don't mean good, like everyone is absolutely phenomenal on the same level, just a good group of people who are really willing to to learn and dive in. We just made the community aspect of it better. So there's there's I changed that up a little bit. So there's more support from me and the team as well. And um honestly it doesn't make sense for me to me that people wouldn't be in there for how cheap it is and how much value you get. You get all the all the things that I teach every single week are in there, the full exercise, full, not exercise, but there's lots of exercise stuff, but full library of videos are in there where I teach all these concepts. This week, I did a video on looking at the, the biomechanics of the forefoot and then seeing what's happening, some, some hopping variations, helping you train your coaching coach's eye. So like in 15 minutes, you learn that and you know it forever. So you, and you're just kind of smarter than the person that's right sitting beside you that hasn't watched that video. So it really doesn't make sense to me that uh, you wouldn't be in there. Um, so if you want to join the 506 members, I think, then make sure you jump over to DGR Interactive. The industry is moving fast. People are understanding that. I don't need to be the... I don't need to be the biomechanics guy or the SNC guy or girl or the person who just talks about breathing or the person who just does manual therapy or whatever. Like people need to understand all of these different things and that's where i i think the industry is very much going people are getting way smarter and i wouldn't like you to be left behind because 
basically the compound effect takes place where if you just did like 10 or 15 minutes every week in at the end of the year how much better a coach or clinician would you be versus not doing the 10 or 15 minutes every week so um so i honestly believe that and i honestly believe i don't want to like push it pushy pushy on it but i really believe that is a good place for you to go to um to learn from us and um be as best you can be which will help you help your clients and help your business as well so that's me signing off and uh yeah just join up on djr interactive and i would see you guys next week i hope you really enjoyed it